Hi everyone, it's Kim. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. So today I am bringing you our third, yes, I said third bread recipe. So the first one that I gave you was bread in the bread maker. I will link that down below as well as the French bread. That was the second one that we made. So today I am making artisan or artesian bread. Not sure how it's pronounced. Um, let me know in the comments um, if it's with us. Is it E? Is it artesian or is it artisan? So let me know I or E in the comments. And that way I'll know how I'm pronouncing it, if it's proper or not. So today's recipe is super easy again, um, calls for four ingredients. So it should come out to be about the same point wise as the French bread recipe. I'll definitely run that through my WW um, app to make sure that I'm on point with the points for that. So if you like these bread recipes or the bread videos or any other videos, or if you just like me in general, give me a thumbs up and leave me some comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And with that said, I'm gonna turn you around. We're gonna get started. And there's a special treat on today's video. I was going to just go ahead and whip up a big batch of this dough and bake it. But since my twinsy Allison is here, I'm gonna do half the recipe. She's gonna do half the recipe. And we're gonna see how it, they turn out. So. This bread does need to, the dough needs to rise for a couple of hours and then we're gonna let it rise overnight so that we can bake these tomorrow. So let me turn you around, show you how simple and easy this recipe is and let's go. Okay, so the recipe that we are doing today comes from the Big Family Homestead and calls for just four ingredients. First ingredient you're gonna need is all-purpose flour. We need eight cups of that. We're gonna need two tablespoons of active dry yeast, two tablespoons of salt, and four cups of water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate those ingredients into the two bowls. I'm gonna pull one together, she's gonna pull another one together, and then we're gonna go ahead and let them rest. So let's jump into this. It should only take a few minutes to pull this together, and then we can enjoy some yummy bread tomorrow. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some salt into our bowls. I'm going to use, <laughs> and if you watched my French bread recipe, I forgot to add the salt in. And I about panicked at the end. So that's one for me. And one for Allison. Pretty simple so far, right? Now, my dry yeast, I just put into jars so that I have that ready to go. And I'll try to remember to put a picture of the actual package. I think I took a picture of that and saved it. So active dry yeast, one tablespoon for me, one tablespoon for Allison. All right, so the next thing we're gonna need is some super duper warm water. Not to the point of being hot, but to the point of it being like, you could touch it, but you're not gonna burn yourself. So I didn't wanna do this too early because of the fact that I wanted to make sure that it was the right temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this to the right temperature and then I'll measure this out and then I will come back. So here is two cups of Warm, almost hot water for Allison's bowl. We're gonna go ahead and pour that in and she's going to give that one a stir while I get the other one ready. And again, I'm pulling this water right out of my tap just to make it easier. And I could bring my thermometer out and check the temperature, but I don't think that's needed, so. I'm just going to put that in there. We're going to give this a stir. I almost want to grab a whisk and whisk that through. I don't think it's needed. I think you're just going to have to let it sit for a minute. Just going to scrape that down on the side here. Make sure all that, all that yeast is in our bowl. So 
got that in there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to put our flour. our flour in. Thank you, darling. Right, I'm just going to move this off to the side. And we're going to start dumping flour. Now, she's going to get four cups of flour. I'm going to get four cups of flour. And yes, I will pan you over so that you can see her once she starts pulling this together. So we're going to get hers together first. That's one. one more and um, on my last video I did talk about the differences um, between the bread flour and the all-purpose flour and I used to try to use the bread flour but it really didn't make that big of a difference so I decided that it wasn't worth my time to spend the extra money or you know start to use that it's a lot easier for me just to use the all-purpose flour that I always have in my kitchen so all right, I'm gonna pull her over here. I'm gonna change our angle. I thought maybe she would illustrate for you or talk to you on camera, but she's gonna sit over there and be shy today. What are you doing, Allison? Mixing it. Do you wanna show a little bit of how it's coming together? Cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get my four cups of flour in the bowl. And then I'll start mixing mine. Now, from what I understand, this is going to get tough to mix, so we may have to switch from the spoons to our hands. So if we have to do that, that's when it always gets fun and a little messy. All right, so I've got my four cups in the bowl now. You see she's starting to struggle a little bit there. I'm going to turn you back around. And the flour that I'm using today is just this gold metal flour. And I picked this up, I think, at Kroger in the 10 pound bag. So it's always good to have extra flour when you need it. Also, while I was at Costco, I had picked up a 25 pound bag of flour. So I was really well stocked on flour because I knew that we were gonna do this series for you and start to make more bread. So I was kind of excited about getting the 25 pound bag because if you've been looking for flour lately, you'll know that it's kind of getting scarce around here. And I knew that this 10 pound bag was not gonna get me through all the different variations of the breads that I wanted to make. How's your bread coming along over there, darling? It's hard to mix. Huh? It's hard to mix. Mine's mixing pretty good over here. Oh, look at mine. Okay, bring yours over. Let me see it. I think it's looking pretty good. What do you think? Right, so I'm just going to give mine a quick little stir here and then we'll clean off my spoon. I'm going to double check hers. I think she did a great job. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments how you think Allison did. I really didn't have to do too much to it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and I did wash my hands before we got started. Let's so get the rest of this dough off. All right, so that's done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to throw Allison's, if you want to grab your bowl. Let's go set mine in the sink for now. We're going to throw hers into a container because this is going to about double in size. And I don't have a lid for the bowl that we're using, but we thought maybe it would be tough to use this square bowl. So we're just gonna go ahead and dump this. I should have dumped this before I cleaned the spoon off, right? Dump this right into her bowl. And then we're gonna put this, just gonna leave it on the counter for two hours and let this rise. I'll check back in with you because it's good because we'll be able to see in this one. And my bowl has a lid, so I'm just gonna pop the lid on that loosely. So I'll check back in with you probably in an hour, let you know how that's looking so you guys have a good look at that, right? This is um, kind of how it's looking. So we're just gonna set the lid on this one. We're gonna pop the lid on mine and then we will come back. Okay, 
so now this has been sitting on my counter for two hours. So we're gonna first look at Allison's. Remember that little blob that was in the middle? Look at that. It's totally doubled, tripled, quadrupled in size. This is gonna be fun tomorrow to play with. And let's look at mine. Just gonna pop the top on for now. Okay, you ready? Let's see if I can bring you in a little bit there. All right, so we haven't looked at this one yet. Ooh, that's a lot bigger too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get these in the fridge so that they quit rising so much. And then tomorrow we will pull them out of the fridge and then start to let it come to room temperature a little bit. We're gonna form them into balls and then we're gonna throw them in the oven and bake them. So stay tuned for tomorrow. It's already like 10 o'clock at night. So we're gonna wrap this up tonight and we'll continue this tomorrow. Okay, so we let this sit in the fridge for probably, I don't know, 48 hours. And I did have it tipped on its side a little bit, so you're gonna notice it's, it's off to the side just a tad. But we're gonna have Allison go ahead and open this and show you how much it rose. So that is quite a bit. And they said that once it rises, it's gonna get the little, the little holy kind of look to it. It's gonna bring you a little closer. You can see that it's kind of little dimpled there, which is perfect. So this is what you do want your dough to look like after it has sat and done the rise for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle some flour on our board. Okay, so we're just gonna put some flour down, just sprinkle a little bit here to work with just so our dough doesn't stick. And then I am going to grab a spoon and I'm gonna turn this out onto our floured board. Now this is going to be sticky. Um, expect this to be sticky. And this is gonna make four, four loaves of bread too. So there we go. We're gonna put some more, some more on top here. And then Allison is gonna start to roll this into a ball. And we're gonna start to just kind of pull this together. Go ahead. So, yep, so you want to push it and then pull it over and then push it again. Okay, and then twist it and do the same thing. Push it, push it down, pull it up. Good job. And if you have, you know, younger, younger kids at home, this is a great thing to do with them and, you know, a nice thing to teach them. You know, it's it's a skill. I mean, it's not we're we're not going through this stuff. We don't have home economics anymore in school to show them how to do some of this stuff. And I know I'm probably dating myself with the home economics comment. Sorry, a little bit more flew out there than I thought. But you, I mean, this is a good skill to have. You know, so they can have. All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and jump in here just for a minute. Just take over, just so I can feel feel the dough itself see how it's working. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into fours. Does not have to be exact, just has to, has to be pretty, you know, this is, probably shouldn't be cutting on my pastry mat. I need to get one of those, one of those pastry scraper cutter things I think that would be cool to have. All right, we're just gonna separate those. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to put a little flour on the open edges. Do you see that? On your open edge, is this the one? Which one are you gonna work with? Oh, mm. Work with the one closest to you. This one. Okay. And then we're just gonna go ahead and just kind of start to tuck this under, just like this. Mm. Oh, see, just tuck it under just to make a ball. Perfect, like this, and then set it over here. Put some more flour on your hands because you got a couple sticky edges. All right, and we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna roll those edges underneath and make a ball. Now our dough is a little bit cold, but the good thing is, is this is gonna sit on a cookie sheet with parchment paper for this one's a little sticky on the bottom. So is mine. 
Okay, just throw some more flour on it. And it's going to sit on a cookie sheet with parchment paper for another 40 minutes. In the meantime, I have my, I'm going to preheat my oven to 450 degrees. I just started it, but now that I'm thinking it's 40 minutes, I may stop it and then restart it in a little while because I don't think that we need to have it preheating that long. And my oven heat, you know, it heats up pretty quick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some parchment paper and you can pick up parchment paper just about anywhere. Um, I had my husband grab some for me at Menards. I mean, so it's pretty easy to find parchment paper if you're looking for it. So I'm just gonna move my mat here and my flour. Make sure that you guys can see that, you can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these on my cookie sheet. And we're gonna let that rise for 40 minutes. So Allison, will you do the honors mm -hmm. and set our timer? Alexa, set timer 40 minutes. 40 minutes, starting now. All right, we will see you guys back in about 40 minutes. So I let these rise for an hour instead of 40 minutes since I did just take them out of the fridge and it still seemed a little cold. So I was afraid that maybe it didn't rise, you know, as much as I thought it should. All right, so here is our bread now. And this is still gonna rise more once it bakes a little bit. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a knife, just a regular knife, and we're just gonna cut some slits in this. And that's just gonna keep it from cracking. So we're just gonna put those in there. I know that they have some kind of a special scoring blade or something. It's like a razor blade and you could do it with that, but since I don't have that and I don't bake bread a lot, I just wanna make sure that I do this with a little bit with the the knife just to make sure it gets some some relief you can see it just kind of plus it looks really pretty when it's done all right so or I hope it looks pretty when it's done all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven and I'll give you one last look here it is I'm gonna put them in the oven I've got the oven preheated at 450 degrees they're going to bake for 30 minutes and when that is done I'll come back and show you what they look like All right, I just pulled these out of the oven and they look absolutely amazing. The lighting in here is not giving, it's just not doing them justice. Let me see if I can bring them up a little closer to you without burning myself. Look at those, still not, they're just, they're golden brown. They look amazing. Oh, chop, chop, chop. All right, I'll see if I can bring you in closer a different way. But I'm gonna go ahead and let these cool. I'm gonna. Let them rest there for a minute. I'm going to pull them off. I'm going to throw them on a cooling rack and then I will come back and show, you know, I'll come back and we'll give it a try together. So hold on, I'll bring you over and I'll show you a little closer look. They puffed up really well too. All right, there we go. That's a little better. You can actually see, see what I'm seeing. So look at those. They're probably, it's kind of hard to see, but they're probably, they're bigger than my, the palm of my hand. I just, it's kind of hard to get a, I've got you guys zoomed in so much. But um, yeah, they look great. All right, I'm gonna let these cool down and then I'll come back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move a couple of these off the board just so that we have a little more cutting room. And I'll pick this one because it's not as pretty as the rest of them. <laughs> Isn't that what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to, to, to take the one that, um, okay, let me see if I can cut this with you. Can you see that? Let me bring it a little closer. There we go. See if I can cut it this way. Look at that. Oh, nice, crispy, crusty. Yum. All right, I'm going to split this. Oh, it's just so crunchy. All right, I'm gonna give a piece to my helper here. We're gonna try these really quick. Let's show the crunch. Oh, 
All right, folks, I think we have another winner here. Definitely have another winner. This is so good. All right, so I have not calculated the points for this one yet. I will go ahead and calculate the points based on the four, and I'll put them down below in the comments along with the recipe that I used. So definitely, if you can get your hands on some yeast, give this one a try. Now, if you're interested in knowing which one I'm doing next, I am going to start making a sourdough starter. So it may be two weeks before you see another bread recipe. I know, I know you guys are like, wow, she's baking a lot of bread. I really am baking a lot of bread. So the good thing is that you can half this recipe, just make half so that you have what I have here. And you could bake this as you need it. You can um, leave this in the fridge for up to two weeks. So you can just bake it and use what you need. You know, you know. I mean, if you wanted fresh bread every day, you could totally make fresh bread the next four days if you wanted to. Um, I don't know if I said this, but I did let it rise extra time because I did take it out of the fridge. If you were just going to mix up the dough and let it rest on your counter for the two hours and then make one right away, you would only have to let it rise that second time for you know, just the 40 minutes and that would have been fine. So, all right. So with that said, I'm going to sign off from here. Hopefully you, hopefully you liked today's video. And um, I'm not sure if I said this, but don't forget to give me a thumbs up because that really helps my channel out a lot. And leave me some comments below. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. I think we have lots of fun here. So with that said, signing off, have a great day. We'll see you next time.